Hello and welcome to the Merriman House program. We're so glad that you joined us today. You know, usually when we come to you, we come to you with specific information about the Merriman House Domestic Crisis Center, the issue of domestic violence and how it affects those in our community. Today we're going to be talking about that, but so much more as we focus on the power of partnership. And so today I would like to welcome our guest, Mary O'Dockerty, the Assistant Director for the Kentucky Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and Kiki West Johnson, uh, the Ready to Work Coordinator for the college itself. So welcome, ladies. I'm so glad you joined us today. Now, I think it's really important for viewers to have just a minute to get to know you personally before we talk about how in the world the two of you ended up on the couch together. It just <laughs> seems not like a likely uh, partnership. So let's start with you, Mary. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, you drove from Frankfurt, so we're glad to have you. Uh, yes, thanks. I'm, thanks very much for having me. I'm an assistant director at the Kentucky Coalition Against Domestic Violence, and I run the Coalition's Economic Empowerment Project, which is a project to help domestic violence survivors become economically self-sufficient. Okay. Thank you for being here. And Kiki, what about you? I work here at West Kentucky Community Technical College, and I do the Ready to Work program. Mm -hmm. I work with single parents who receive assistance from the state. Mm -hmm. I help them with any barriers that may keep them from becoming successful, whether that, that be time management, study mm -hmm. skills, transportation, child care, housing, a whole array of things. So you're an obstacle remover. I try. Uh, and I you're try. an economic empowerer, so I see how but how in the world does the Coalition Against Domestic Violence link up with the community college system? Mary, I'll let you take that. Well, it, it really was a pretty organic uh, partnership. We um, have been, we've run our economic empowerment project um, with our 15 domestic violence programs. Um, my organization administers funds for 15 domestic violence programs across the state, Merriman mm -hmm. Houses is of course uh, one of our proudest members and we um, noticed when we were doing our economic empowerment project that students who were in the program that Kiki runs, there are, there are 16 of them across the state, one on each of the 16 campuses, we noticed that the students in the ready to work program mm -hmm. were succeeding more easily than others um, and, and we we were really intrigued by that because we, we noticed that if a, we had a student in our program who was also in the Ready to Work program, uh, the, the chances of them enrolling in college and completing college were greater. So mm -hmm. we wanted to find out more. Um, we learned that the coordinators like Kiki um, provide this terrific case management, they call it education-based case management. And that in combination with the supportive services that survivors are getting in our program just dovetailed really well together. Huh. So after investigating and learning about the program, um, we went to the chancellor of the college system, the Kentucky Community and Technical College System, mm -hmm. and asked them to consider partnering with us. Um, the college put up about $300,000 wow. um, to help um, fund this project. And that, that we, we made that agreement about two years ago. We've been okay. actually running the project for about 18 months now. And I know I was at the press conference where uh, that was announced and it seems to be such an excitement about this partnership, sort of like one of those things, why don't we think of this before? This mm -hmm. is gonna work. Um, and so it's been going, you said, for about 18 months. About 18 months, yes. We've um, basically, um, our economic empowerment project involves providing financial education, just basic, personal financial management instruction and as an incentive for students and for domestic violence survivors at our programs to get involved, we offer what matched savings accounts or we'll call them IDAs, individual development accounts. Okay. And students who participate um, will get um, $4 for every dollar they save. So if they save a maximum of $1,000, they will receive $4,000 wow. in matching funds, which totals $5,000. Um, I think part of the reason why this works so well is the tuition costs at um, KCTCS colleges, you know, are pretty reasonable. Mm -hmm. And so you can cover, um, I think, I don't know, Kiki, how much is it? At least two semesters with that $5,000. With that $5,000, certainly. certainly. They could, at least two semesters. So, you know, the missions and the philosophies line up beautifully. I mean, you, uh, Kentucky Coalition has been doing this work as it ex uh, applies to survivors of domestic violence for 
a ten, long ten time. Years. Ten years. Uh, because we know that mm -hmm. one of the biggest barriers is financial for mm -hmm. domestic violence survivors mm -hmm. to leave that abusive relationship. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you are already wrapping your students in the supportive care that they need to make them successful. And so you come together and now they have an opportunity to save money uh, and to get the support they need to become economically self-sufficient. Is that pretty much the, the nuts and bolts of the mission, mm -hmm. the philosophy of it? Kiki, from your perspective, uh, why has it, has it worked and what do, you, what do you think about this partnership? I think it's a great partnership and it is working. Mm -hmm. uh, students are uh, taking control of their own finances. Mm -hmm. They're beginning to save unlike ever before. Okay. Uh, many come from a lifetime of poverty mm -hmm. and so they don't know what it's like to have a savings account. And so many of my students were quite intimidated about saving mm -hmm. uh, when I first approached them. But as they began to save that money and started receiving the statements, um, sh basically showing how much they had saved and how it was going to be matched, I could see the excitement. Mm -hmm. And they felt like, I can save a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And so they would come back and say, is it possible for me to add $5 more? or ten dollars more I see. and and start developing a plan for that and so I think it's been wonderful you know one of the things I certainly want to make sure we have time for today is to talk about um, you know the criteria for the program and just the very practical nuts and bolts of that but I still am a little curious um, how does the issue of domestic violence play into or how did it play into why this was an important linkage between the two of you well we know from research that um, a large number of women who receive public assistance also experience domestic violence. I think some of the studies um, we've seen have a range of from 60 to 80 percent of women who are receiving TANF mm -hmm. or federal public assistance um, are also experiencing domestic violence. Does so that number shock you? It, 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 it is shocking. It is shocking, but it, it it's, it gets to how prevalent domestic violence uh -huh. is. I mean, we say that one in three or one in four women experiences domestic violence. So if you think about it um, from that perspective, if you think about low-income families are usually so much more vulnerable mm -hmm. anyway to mm -hmm. other social issues and social woes, um, it starts to make a little more sense. Sure. So we thought this would be another way for our organization to help our member programs address the issue and, and, and get services. I mean, we have, we sheltered, um, our domestic violence program sheltered about 4,000 um, families, no, actually 4,000 individuals um, last year, um, and we served about 22,000 with non-residential services. Well, we know there are so many more women and families out there that need our services, so we're all about trying to find other ways to reach them. And, and so has this become another door of access most from definitely. your perspective? Most certainly. Um, my students did not come to me ever and say, this is what's going on, that I've been abused. They would talk about education and how you know, they're doing in their classes or, and um, you know, whether or not they had child care um, and their grades. But they never said anything to me about abuse. Mm -hmm. And so this partnership has opened it up to they're more revealing. Um, they get the opportunity to talk with someone from um, KD. UCADB. <laughs> right. The world of acronyms. Right? Yes. They get the opportunity <clears throat> to speak with someone. And it opens the door for that conversation, a conversation that they ordinarily wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And so I, I don't want to ask maybe a, the obvious question, but why is, why is that important? Why does that matter in their success track for education? It matters because if we do not uh, manage and, and work with them holistically mm -hmm. with every avenue, then it doesn't matter how much education they get. Um, they will not be successful because if they are living in an abusive situation, that can really be daunting mm -hmm. and it can hold an individual back. And so that's not what we want for our students. And mm -hmm. so this partnership has opened it up to we can address that and mm -hmm. we can deal with it and the students can move on and be successful because that's the ultimate goal. 
we know, Kiki, there's so much conversation sometimes around violence on campus uh, and, and violence for student populations. You know, the, the community college is not immune to that same reality. It's just you have such a, a diverse population, both traditional and non-traditional students. Um, I think this is such a unique way to address the issues not from a prevention uh, per se or a bystander intervention program, but rather from an economic empowerment and holistic health approach. And I wonder, does it seem to put folks at more at ease to talk about deeper issues that are directly affecting their grades and all the things that they're coming to the table Most to try certainly, to because it's non-threatening. Mm -hmm. You know, if you go up to an individual and you say, are you being abused? The first thing I say is no. Mm -hmm. You know, why would you ask me such a thing? Mm -hmm. Of course not. Mm -hmm. But when you begin to work with them individually, addressing all issues and talking about finances and, and the partnership that we have, they are more open to it. Mm -hmm. This is what's going on mm -hmm. because they can actually see the light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. So tell me, have we been successful so far? What would you, what would you say and how would you define that? I think we've been very successful. We've, um, so far, we have helped um, about 650 students um, attend a financial workshop. Wow. Um, about half of that group have received one-on-one -on -one financial counseling where they've gotten, a, where they've received a credit report. Um, we've um, got 46 students who've already used the money that they've saved in their individual development account to pay for, for school expenses. Now, do they have to use it just for that? Okay, yes, so they, that is part of the... Okay. The federal rules that, um, that we must work under require any of the funds that are saved in the IDA to be used for either tuition or books or any other expense that's dictated by the school. And part of the beauty of this partnership, though, is it, the students who get this extra $5,000, that frees up money that they get Absolutely. from their Pell Grants and other assistance so they can use them for, for other, mm -hmm. for living expenses or ideally they'll borrow less. Right. That's, that's our, that's the ultimate goal. That's what we really mm -hmm. hope will happen. We have 107 students saving in IDAs across the state right now. And we've got room for at least 30 more students to enroll. Okay. So, you know, those are pretty impressive numbers. I would, I would think, you know, just as a hearer, you know, mm -hmm. I'm sure you all have goals and benchmarks mm -hmm. that you're certainly, you know, looking to accomplish. But I mean, those are individual lives that are truly taking, in my opinion, innovative steps uh, to better themselves. I, I wanted to mention, if I could, that, that I'm really, really thrilled that we get to talk about this program for the first time in Paducah because um, Kiki's program was um, the leader among all of the colleges when it came to enrolling you. students in our program. Um, we had, uh, she, she had 10 slots initially and Kiki, how long did it take you to enroll those? Not very long, um, not very long, uh, maybe a couple of months. Mm -hmm. I was able to get um, at least 10 students to mm -hmm. enroll and get excited about it. Mm -hmm. um, again, we're talking about students that are low income. Mm -hmm. And so if you talk to them and say something about a four to one match, they're looking for a scam. Mm -hmm. sure. And they've been trying to do that, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but I believe the relationship that I have with the students, they were more trusting. Sure. And they said, I, I think I can do this. Well, and, and it's right there that we're gonna take a break and when we come back, I would like to hear of this, because of, your praises are sung uh, at the state level. I'd like to hear more about that. I would also like to hear about how people actually get enrolled in this program, and then also just uh, a little bit more about the issue of economic empowerment and its intersection with this issue of domestic violence. So stay tuned. Lots of great things ahead, and we'll be right back. The Merriman House Domestic Crisis Center has been saving building and changing the lives of domestic violence victims since 1978. Last year alone, the Merriman House provided life-saving services to more than 1,000 victims in the Purchase region. This comprehensive advocacy and support program offers a host of services to assist survivors on their journey to healing, wholeness, and safety, which include 24-hour access to emergency protective orders, financial assistance and housing stabilization, a 24-hour crisis line and emergency shelter, advocacy and support services, and much more. 
Take your place in the fight against domestic violence and join hands with the Merriman House today. You can visit their website at themerrimanhouse.org to learn more about how you can find help, get connected, or give back. Call 1-800-575-2686 or go to merrimanhouse.org. Welcome back to the Merriman House Domestic Crisis Center program where we are highlighting power in partnership. And so today we are talking about the partnership between the Kentucky Coalition Against Domestic Violence and the community college uh, system, two powerhouses in their own rights, and how in the world did they come together to serve the people of Paducah, McCracken County and the state better than ever before. So today our guests include Mary O'Doherty from the Kentucky Coalition, as well as Kiki West jo Johnson from West Kentucky Community and Technical College Ready to Work program. That is a mouthful. So yes, thank you both thank for you. being here. Uh, we left our viewer um, after hearing about just the partnership, how it came to be, why it's important, why you think it's becoming successful. And I just wonder, for those just tuning in, they may be saying what I said originally was, Really, I mean, I know domestic violence is prevalent because of the work I do, but others may be thinking, is there really a need for this partnership, the issue of domestic violence that prevalent and, and that prevalent that it would affect a student population in this way? And so I'd like to start just there to springboard into your successes and where you hope to go in the future, but talk to me, Mary, in your role about the prevalence of domestic violence and what was in it for the college why did you all want to go this path? We wanted to go down this path because we knew that a significant number of students um, at our state's community college system were experiencing domestic violence or had experienced domestic violence. You know, um, educators talk about um, academic obstacles that mm -hmm. keep students from succeeding and most importantly from completing their college educations. Right. Well, you know, education experts also agree that non-academic obstacles are another huge project, huge obstacle and, and perhaps even more important when you're dealing with um, low-income families. Okay. Um, well, we know that domestic violence is a key non-academic obstacle that these students are dealing with. Um, so we saw this as a way to help educate the leadership of the, of the college system um, about how important of an obstacle domestic violence mm -hmm. is. We figured people like Kiki West Johnson know that already, but we really wanted to make sure that the people who are running the system know that. And we had a really um, telling moment uh, a month or so ago, we were asked to go and speak to the presidents of the 16 colleges at their um, annual PTL meeting. And at that meeting, we told them that an evaluation we had had conducted, we're working with the University of Kentucky to evaluate this project. That evaluation showed that 69% of the students um, that we're working with reported experiencing domestic violence or having been affected by domestic violence in their lives. That is an unbelievable number to me, 69%. When we presented that number to the leadership team, um, Dr. Jay Box, who runs this fine institution, said, excuse me, did you say 69%? Yes. And we said, most definitely. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's a, it's a head-turning number, and it, it really speaks to the prevalence of domestic violence in Kentucky and, and across mm -hmm. the country. Wow. And so I would imagine then the natural response to moving towards a solution is this is a way to get there. There actually was a lot in this partnership for um, the college system as well. You know, um, one of the essential, essential ingredients for successful partnerships is there has to be something in it for both sure. parties, right? Sure. And for KCADV, this was an opportunity to help reach more domestic violence survivors and to educate the, the community college system about mm -hmm. the prevalence of domestic violence, but for Dr. Box and the institutions, um, their, one of their uh, primary issues right now is, is student retention. They want more okay. students to graduate, and um, Dr. Box saw this as a way to increase um, his retention rates. Mm -hmm. 
um, the, the way the program works, um, you're not eligible to open an individual development account until you've completed 12 hours. Okay. And so he saw this as a way to incentivize students who are, who are maybe facing their, their second or third semester to stick with it. If you, if you open one of these accounts, you have the ability to generate an additional $5,000 um, and funds that you can use to, to pay for your college education, mm -hmm. maybe that's going to be a way to keep that student enrolled and engaged, particularly a student that's facing um, some financial stressors. Sure. And so I do think it's important for us maybe to right now talk to the student or prospective student that is watching. So the one that's enrolled and is struggling with that decision on retention and the, the one that maybe has not yet enrolled, um, what do they need to do to be able to take advantage of this program? Okay. They would want to get in touch with me, Kiki West Johnson, here at West Kentucky Community and Technical College, mm -hmm. and speak to me about the Ready to Work program. Mm -hmm. And um, I will give them information as to how to get enrolled. Uh, it's a short application process, okay. but they must be low income and must be receiving assistance from the low state. Low income as defined how? Below the 200% poverty level. Okay, and that's something you help them? Most certainly. Okay, so it really is as simple as a, call, a phone call to you and, and then you step them through yes. from that point. So <clears throat> sometimes I think what our goals are from the perspective or the viewpoint of somebody that is a, a, a leader, right? I mean, somebody from, I guess I'm trying to say, a position where they're looking at the whole bird's eye view, so the president of the institution. Mm -hmm versus those carrying out the desired goal or at trying to execute that mission. So from your perspective, Kiki, does it help with retention? Does it help students become successful? Do you think it is accomplishing what it was intended to do? Yes, I, I believe it's not only helping with retention, but the students are taking out less student loans. Okay. And so I don't know if that was even thought of but the debt I ratio. that's exactly right but i th i think that uh, having this so this resource mm -hmm. they're taking out less student loans mm -hmm. and so i i find that that's significant it, it makes a huge difference in their gradu them graduating and being successful and not carrying student loan debt mm -hmm. uh, not as much so is there anything you would add, Mary? Yes, I, I think um, I wanted to mention that we're we're able to to fund this project in addition to the to the support that we're getting from the the state community college system. We also have um, funding support from two national foundations that are very interested in this project. Wow! Um, they think that it might be uh, a model uh, that can be replicated. We are getting funds from the Kellogg Foundation mm -hmm. uh, and also from the Finra Foundation, and, and both of those. Uh, foundations funded us because they we they they thought that uh, the idea that w that we are exploring here could have um, you know could be replicated in mm -hmm. other communities. Part of I think part of the reason another reason why I think we got their attention was we're kind of we're part we've got two statewide in, two statewide networks: the domestic violence network, the community college network. Two statewide networks that are both committed to the success of low-income families and are particularly interested in uh, making life better for vulnerable children. Because mm -hmm. all of the students that are participating in this project um, have, have children because they, have to receive, they must receive TANF in order to um, participate. So they all have children. And so the foundations are saying, what can we do to help this next generation um, of, 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 of people and People in, in my world and in your world mm -hmm. often say, well, one way you can help is to help the, help the moms. That's right. Help the moms, help the moms become economically self-sufficient, help them get a family sustaining mm -hmm. income. Mm -hmm. um, if you do those things, you will improve the prospects for mm -hmm. the next generation. Well, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, I couldn't agree more on so many fronts. I think it's so critical, and this is just such an exciting way uh, to accomplish those much broader stroke goals that both your domestic violence programs statewide and here locally through the Merriman House, as well as um, the work that you're doing so are so complementary of one another. So I would be remiss if I didn't ask, what are the success stories? Are there success stories so far? If so, tell me about those. Most certainly. I just had two students who graduated um, from West Kentucky, and I'm going off, one's going to Murray State, 
to study uh, speech pathology. Wow. And she's going to use the money in which she saved in the IDA, um, actually from her financial aid, um, being able to use the IDA to pay for her tuition here. She's going to use her savings to offset the tuition at Murray State. Wow. And then I have another student who is going off to Lindsay Wilson, mm -hmm. and she's studying counseling. And so mm -hmm. she's going to do the same with her savings as okay. well. Now, Mary, I realize that the success story may look different. I mean, your reach in terms of all of the member programs and, and what they're doing around economic empowerment, what, why is this successful from your perspective? Or is there one story or issue or thing accomplished that you really feel like it is something you'd like to highlight? Well, to me, the, the accomplishment I'm proudest of right now is I think we've really raised um, the importance, raised the, um, the prominence of the issue of domestic violence mm -hmm. with the community college system. I mean, we've had the opportunity to go and speak to the presidents of all 16 schools yeah. about domestic violence. And um, while we know that they're obviously aware of domestic violence, how, how much time did they really think about it, though, as an, as an obstacle for their students? So Absolutely. I think that's a tremendous, um, tremendous success. Um, but I'm also just thrilled that we've reached more than uh, about 650 students um, and had a chance to talk to them about the importance of budgeting, have, have had a chance to talk to them about the importance of getting, uh, knowing what their credit score is, mm -hmm. that we've helped half of those students pull their own credit reports and given them their score. Mm -hmm. You know, um, your, your, your credit score um, is really like your financial resume. And it's really important for everyone, but especially young people, mm -hmm. especially people who are launching themselves, mm -hmm. to understand that they're going to, this credit score is going to be used to make judgments about them. Employers are going to use it, um, renters use it, land, landlords use it. Um, and um, it's really important for them to know what it is and to, to work to keep it as high as it can be. Mm -hmm. And so we only have a very short amount of time left, but I wonder if you could take just this opportunity to quickly, uh, what would you say to a survivor of domestic violence who may not have given any thought to education, certainly no thought to their credit score, maybe finances has been part of the way the tool used to abuse or to assert power and control, what would you say to them? I would say to them that they, that they can deal with these issues, that it isn't beyond their, their scope. Um, it might, you know, worrying about your credit score might seem like um, something that's too hard to accomplish or something that's too far down the road. But we've got so many stories of, of women who came into our programs and one year later are enrolled in our project, who are taking financial education classes. I mean, they've gone from living in a domestic violence shelter um, and one year later living in their own housing, being independent from their abusers, mm -hmm. having, their, having a place for themselves and their children to live safely and decently. Um, it, it doesn't take that much time to get from, from the shelter to beginning on that path to economic self-sufficiency. Thank you both so much for being here and thank you for joining us because it may not take a lot of time, it just takes the right tools and this is a great starting place for you. We'll see you next time.